piece of legislation that supports the values of New Zealanders. It is not a piece of legislation that upholds other gambling law. Part one of this bill is just plain wrong. It does not meet the purpose of the stated here, and it allows an agreement to be written into law that goes against the interests of New Zealanders. Uh, Materia Toure. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, I I'm very pleased to take the first of a number of calls on this legislation. I have a number of uh, amendments to this bill in part two. But here in part one, I'm particularly concerned around purpose, the purpose clause. And the apparent overarching purpose of this legislation, which is to provide economic benefits to New Zealanders. We have had a very close look at the economic benefits from the papers that have been provided to us. And, sir, I can tell you now that I don't know whether Mr Key and Mr Joyce deliberately misinformed the House over the number of jobs that would be created, but they certainly did misinform the House. There is, not, there is no paper that is available to anyone but them, perhaps they're still keeping that one secret, that describes the number of jobs as they have said. So they've claimed 800 jobs uh, in the, as a result of the uh, final convention centre. They've claimed 1,000 jobs that will be created as part of the construction. And this is supposedly part of the great economic benefit to New Zealanders from this deal. Well, let's just have a look at the information that's been provided. They first relied on the Howarth report. There is nothing in the Howarth report that describes those numbers of jobs. They relied on the Cordamenta report. <laughs> they relied on the Cordamenta. My apologies to my colleague. They replied, relied on the Cordamenta report, uh, which was produced earlier this year. That report does say uh, that it's looked at the economic benefits. It does not describe 800 jobs in the convention centre or 1,000 jobs in the construction phase. And that's right, Mr. Mallard. And it says the financial analysis of both the NZICC and the regulatory concessions are based on an Excel model from two, April 2013 prepared by Sky City. So the Cordamenta report is based entirely on the information from the one organisation that's about to get millions, hundreds of millions of dollars of benefit from this deal. Still, that report does not talk about 800 jobs in the convention centre or 1,000 uh, on construction. So then we look to government's own information that they provide to the public to help inform the public around the economic benefits of this deal. And so we go to the regulatory impact statement which provides that information. And we see here actually the description of the 800, and 800 jobs and the 1,000 jobs. It says here in para 9 of the regulatory impact statement that around uh, 800 people will be employed by the convention centre, with up to 1,000 workers employed in the construction phase. And then there's a little note, footnote 8 on the regulatory impact statement. So let's look to footnote 8 and see where is the evidence that shows that there will be 800 jobs and 1,000 jobs. And that little footnote refers to two things. It refers first to the New Zealand uh, NZIER report and Table 1. And it also refers to information that has been supplied to the government by Sky City. It says received from a leading NZ-based contractor, but it doesn't provide the paper, it doesn't provide the name of that contractor, and it doesn't provide the evidence. So let's have a look first at the NZDI paper it refers to as justification for this misleading, and I still think deliberately misleading, statement around job creation. So what does the NZDI paper say? Oh, it doesn't say 800 jobs in the convention centre. It doesn't say 1,000 jobs in the convention centre. Actually, it says 380 full-time jobs in construction and 340 full-time equivalents once the convention centre is in operation. So somehow, Sky City has created, out of who knows what, thin air, an additional 160 people who will apparently be working at the convention centre and an, an extra 600 people invented by Sky City and agreed to by the government as evidence to back, to back up this claim of 1,000 jobs in construction. Now, this is a deliberate attempt to mislead New Zealanders on the economic impacts of this deal. John Key 
and Stephen Joyce have spent months and months and months telling New Zealanders that there are thousands of jobs in this convention centre, and yet the only piece of, of genuinely independent advice that this government has, and the only genuine advice that they have released to the public, says that they are not telling the truth. That they, Mr Chair. Materia Touray. These simply are not the jobs that they claim. So what are we giving up here? Um, what are we giving up in exchange for uh, this misinformation about job creation? Well, I can give you some numbers of some other people who will be affected by the legislation, uh, people who won't have any choices about how they're involved, people who will actually be harmed by this legislation. Uh, the 6,500 children who the government's own papers say are likely to be harmed from the problem gambling that is caused by this deal. 6,500 children. Those children do actually exist. They are not the made-up people, the made-up workers that Sky City and the government have been talking about. They are children whose lives will be affected, in some cases very damaged for most of their life as a result of this deal. Where do, they, where do they sit? Where is the analysis of the effect, the economic impact on them, the social impact on them from this deal? Actually, there isn't any. Even the government's own, you know, the government looked to um, Cordamenta for some of this information. Cordamenta says they were not engaged to assess the social harm of this deal. The minister himself has said that he sought no advice on the economic harm that could be caused from this deal. Now, I don't know whether he's telling the truth, frankly, because there have been so many mistruths told around this deal. Maybe he did seek the advice and is not prepared to release it. Maybe he didn't seek the advice because he doesn't want to know. Because all he has been prepared to talk about is the mistruths around the job creation and not the reality for the 6,500 children who his own advisers have said will be affected by this legislation. Where is their voice here? Is it only the opposition who cares about 6,500 New Zealand children who could be affected by this bill? Uh, there is no way that it is justifiable to claim any kind of economic benefit from this deal when the numbers of jobs are being deliberately made up and spread around the country and when the real numbers of the people actually affected is being ignored by the people who are making the decisions. Mr Speaker, there is a whole range of economic advice that comes from uh, this legislation and out of the papers that have been released. And all of it flies in the face of the statements made by the government. And even if we just want to look at comparisons, we have comparisons, for example, with convention centres overseas. The, uh, the 3,500 capacity convention centre in Sydney, it only employs 200 full-time equivalents, not the 800 that uh, Stephen Joyce and John Key are claiming. Melbourne's 5,000 capacity convention centre employs just 133 people full-time. 270 casual workers and 130 full-timers. And yet Stephen Joyce somehow thinks that a smaller centre here in New Zealand is going to employ 800 people because he's actually interested in the deal being done, not in the reality for New Zealanders and for Aucklanders. He's not prepared to tell the whole story to the country around the economic, the genuine economic impacts and the genuine economic harm. And why does he mistrust New Zealanders so much? Why does he believe that New Zealanders are too stupid to identify these failings, these mistruths in what he has said? Why will he not tell the truth? If it's such a good deal, why keep information secret? Why not tell New Zealanders the truth about the jobs? Maybe. Maybe New Zealanders will think that it's still worth it if there are 340 jobs, not 800. Maybe they will. What's the harm in treating New Zealanders like they are intelligent people who can make a genuine assessment about the effects, good and bad, from this convention centre? Why put all this spin and mistruth over it? It's because there is an inherent mistrust by this government of New Zealanders and New Zealanders' ability to assess the information and to make an intelligent decision about what they think is necessary. We don't want a government that does that. 
We don't want a government that treats New Zealanders in such a shabby way. We don't want a government that is going to put 6,500 children at risk for, at best, 18 new jobs in the New Zealand economy. Because that is what the research actually says. That is what the table that gov the government has referred to actually says. There will be 18 new jobs in the New Zealand economy as a result of this dirty deal. Jonathan Young. Mr Speaker, I do find...